بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الصادق الأمين وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Surely all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator, the sustainer and the controller of all that happens in the universe and we invoke his peace and blessings upon his noble messenger his family, his companions, and all those who follow them in righteousness until the end of time. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. One of the realities of life is that we will always make mistakes. So it's not so much of a big deal that a person makes a mistake. But in correcting that which is wrong, or correcting the mistake, there is a certain etiquette we are required to follow. The Prophet والسلام, has taught us and has shown us in his own example and his own practice that even when somebody might have, might have done something that we may consider seriously wrong, there is still an etiquette a way, a process to follow in order to correct that which is wrong. And so, not because somebody is right, they can behave however they feel. If the etiquette is wrong, then that is not acceptable from the individual. We all know very well the, the hadith of the man who uh, a Bedouin who came once into the masjid and began to urinate in the masjid. And of course, this is a very bad thing to do. In the masjid of all places, a person should do something like this. And so the Sahabas who were there and witnessed this, they were upset, uh, of course, upset and angry, and, and some of them made a move towards this man to you know, most likely grab him and throw him out of the masjid. That's probably what most of us will do today. But the Prophet ﷺ said to them, Utuku, leave him alone. Leave him alone. And when he was finally done, he told the Sahaba, okay, you guys get a bucket of water and pour it over the spot, because there was no carpet in the masjid. And he called the man and he put the man to sit down. And he very gently, told the man that this is the masjid, the house of Allah, and it was built not for this, but rather for prayers and for contemplation and remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the method he used, of course, left a positive message with the man. If the method is not right, it could result in uh, sort of negative consequences. Now I'm saying all of this, brothers and sisters, because one of our brothers uh, drew my attention to a couple of things that, that happened in the masjid, and he wanted me to share this with you so that we learn the proper etiquette uh, when such situations occur. One uh, situation is where in a three or four rakat prayer, the fart prayer, where the imam may forget to sit down for the first tashahud. After two, we know after two ra'ah, we have to sit down. It is wajib to sit down for tashahud. But what happens or what should happen if the imam forgets? So after he comes up from sujood, the second sujood of the second ra'ah, instead of sitting down for tashahud, he stands up. Now the Prophet والسلام, has informed us that if this is the case, once the Imam has, has stood up all the way, he cannot sit back down. Because he has already moved into the next uh, a pillar. Now sitting for the first tashahud is one of the wajibat is salah. The scholars based on the sunnah they have categorized the various actions of salah for us 
And this categorization is important because it enables or should enable the individual to figure out whether I have done something that I need to repeat my whole prayer or repeat the one rak'ah or it is okay or I can do sujood to sahab. And so they have categorized <coughs> all the actions of salah into one category called shurutu salah, conditions of prayer. And the conditions are things that you have to fulfill before you start to pray. Like facing the qibla, performing wudu, covering the awra, and whatever else. The khul al waqt, the time must arrive. And under the conditions, they have divided the conditions of salah into two further subgroups. One they call shurut al wujub and shurut al siha. Conditions that will make the prayer compulsory and conditions that will make the prayer valid or for the validity of the prayer. So, for example, the arrival of the prayer time is a condition that makes the prayer compulsory. Once the prayer time has not arrived, prayer is not compulsory to anyone. Among the conditions of siha, validity of the prayer, it's uh, having wudu, for example, or covering the awra, facing the qibla. So we have shurut is salah. Then they, they have another category called arkan is salah, pillars of salah. And by the way, before I move on, those things that are classified as shurut is salah, if anyone is missed, the whole prayer has to be repeated. The whole prayer, not just a rak'ah, but the whole prayer is repeated. You fix the missing condition and you repeat the prayer. So if a person were to pray before the time arrived, you have to repeat the whole prayer once the time has arrived. Or if a person has prayed without wudu, and then they remember afterwards, you know what, I didn't have wudu, then you have to make wudu and repeat your salah. Then they have pillars of salah, arkanu salah. Now the arkan, the pillars, are those very important things in prayer that must be performed, but during the prayer, not before per se. Conditions are things you have to do even before you start to pray. Pillars are the things you do now as you actually pray. Like the niyyah and like takbir and like uh, uh, Recitation of Al-Fatiha, Qiyam, Ruku, Pillars of Salah. Now, the ruling of the Pillars of Salah is, if a person misses a Pillar of Salah, then that one Raka'ah is not valid. The rest of the Raka'at, MashaAllah, are valid. But this one Raka'ah in which the person has missed the Pillar is not valid, and so that one Raka'ah alone must be repeated at the end. Unlike the shurud, remember with shurud, you have to repeat the whole prayer. With the arkan, only the one uh, rukun, the one pillar, or, or the one raka in which that pillar is missed, you have to repeat that one. Of course, whether a person misses the, 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 the pillar intentionally or not, the, 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 the salah or the raka has to be repeated. Then there is wajibat is salah. Things that are compulsory, but slightly different from arkan. Because you might wonder, well, what's the difference between wajibat is salah and pillars of salah? Aren't both compulsory? Well, the thing about wajibat is salah, if you miss anyone intentionally, then your prayer is invalid, of course. But if you forget and miss any of the wajibat is salah, then you can do sijjat is sahu to compensate for that. You don't have to repeat anything. While with the pillar, you cannot compensate for a pillar that is missed. If you, in one rak'ah, you made only one sujood instead of two, later on you can't say, oh, you know what, I'll just do sujood tisahu to compensate. You cannot compensate. Whatever rak'ah you've missed the pillar, you have to repeat that rak'ah. With the wajibat, you can compensate by doing sujood tisahu. Prostrations of forgetfulness. And, and, and the tashahud al-awwal, the first tashahud, if you're praying three or four rakats, this is classified as bin wajibat al-salah. 
as from the things that are classified as wajibat as salah meaning, excuse me, things are compulsory however, if you uh, unintentionally miss any you can compensate by doing sijjat is sahih but the rule about missing the tashahud al-awwal the first tashahud remember you're supposed to sit down you may stand up and somewhere in between is a halfway mark so if you are closer to sitting down when you remember you should be sitting down then you can go back down and sit down but if you're closer to standing up wait you're past the halfway mark then you remember you didn't you, you're supposed to sit down you do not go back you continue standing and finish your prayer and then you do sujjat is sahih so if you're praying and you come up back like this and you remember you can go back down but if you're already up here then you just stand up and can complete the prayer the thing is brothers and sisters when we pray in jama'ah of course the etiquette is if the imam makes a mistake we should say subhanallah to inform him that a mistake was made but in this case once the imam has stood up straight up he is not allowed to come back and sit down so to repeat the subhanallah trying to get him to sit down is inappropriate because he can't anymore these are the rules of salah so we say subhanallah to let him know that he he made a mistake yes but there is no need to insist that he should sit down back because that is not allowed at this point in time and so we follow him we follow him in standing up as well because we are obliged to follow the imam the Prophet said in the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim surely the Imam was placed there to be followed to be followed so we follow the Imam and what following means we are behind him we are not equal with him or in front of him so he does whatever he has to do first and then we follow that action of his so the Prophet says فَإِذَا كَبَرَ فَكَبِّرُ when he says takbir to start the prayer you should also say takbir and so on. So we follow the Imam, although he has forgotten, no, we didn't. We know we have to sit down. We can't just sit down and do tashal quickly and join him in prayer. No. We have to follow the Imam. But we should say, Subhanallah, maybe once or twice at most, just to inform him a mistake has been made. There is no need, though, to keep repeating it uh, as if to insist that he should come back and sit down. Because according to the rules of Salah, once you miss the first tashal and you stand up, you're already into another rukun. You're not allowed to come back uh, uh, to the previous rukun. So uh, we follow him. We stand up with him. And at the end of the prayer, of course, he will make sajjat is sahu, which is two prostrations um, before the salam in order to compensate for that. And the other wajibat is salah, which if you forget and you miss them, then you do sujjat is sahu to compensate for that. So this is the etiquette we have to observe in prayer. We say subhanallah to uh, inform the imam a mistake was made, but then we follow him after that. He may not be able to come back to the position that he missed. The other thing is, there are many people who pass through here, and I perhaps this may not apply to you, because you're residents here and you're working downtown. This is mostly for the people who travel. But when you travel, you are allowed as a traveler to shorten your prayers and combine them. You may choose not to shorten, you may choose not to combine. That is uh, permissible as well. But if you happen to go to a masjid in the locality that you've traveled to, and most likely, of course, the imam there might be a resident imam. He might not be a traveler. <coughs> So if you as a traveler join the prayer in congregation with an imam who is a resident, he will pray four rakats. As a, as a follower, we have to follow him and we are not allowed to shorten the prayer while following an imam who is a resident. So we will have to pray four with him. Okay. So don't pray two and when he gets up for his third, you make salams and you finish your, your salah. You have to follow the Imam and pray for rakat as well. Uh, that is if you are a follower and you are a traveler and the Imam is a resident. It may happen sometimes that the Imam may be the traveler and you the resident. In that case, as a resident, 
you have to pray, pray for a cut of the prayer. Let's say it's Dukhur, Asur, or Aisha. We're not allowed to shorten the prayer. But the, the Imam who is a traveler is allowed to shorten his prayer. So he can pray too. But the rest of us who are following him, who are residents and not travelers, once he makes his salam, we will stand up and we will complete the remaining two rak'ah to complete our prayer as residents. So these are some of the etiquettes that uh, I wanted to share with you about prayers. I know there are many other things and perhaps you yourself have questions. If you do, I would appreciate if you can let me know and we can share this with, with, with uh, all of us so that we can all learn from the questions and the answers so that we can pray, mashallah, in a manner that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because brothers and sisters, the most important objective in everything that we do, not only in salah, but everything we do, is that Allah the exalted should be pleased with it. Because if Allah is not pleased, we're wasting time, plain and simple. If Allah is not pleased with what we do, it's a useless exercise. So it's not just enough that we pray and we leave. But we strive to achieve that level whereby we hope that with our prayer, Allah the Exalted will be pleased with that. So uh, if you do have any questions uh, regarding Salah and certain things about Salah, share it with me and we can use these sessions inshallah to share it with all the brothers and sisters so we can all benefit. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us our good deeds. May He forgive for us our mistakes and may He open up our hearts and minds so that we can understand this wonderful message he has revealed and may he inspire all of us to live by this message. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.